Hey, it's Jared, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the Atomos Ninja Blade and how I use it here in the studio. I'm gonna walk through the settings on it and kind of show you uh, a breakdown of what the device is all about. Now, I use the device um, not because I don't like how my Sony A7S captures files. I just like it because I can throw a terabyte solid state drive in the side of it and capture all day long. I mean, there's hours and hours worth of capture time available there, and I don't have to worry about SD cards and which SD card has what on it. I just have one solid state drive full of footage that I could pull off and then quickly load onto my computer using this Atomos dock that is USB 3. And so I just plug this into my computer, slide the hard drive caddy right into this dock, and then I can offload all of my footage. Um, and I can continue to use that solid state drive as a storage drive as well. All of my footage is stored on that. Um, and USB 3 is pretty quick. You could kind of get some quick and dirty editing done, even just directly by accessing the files directly on the drive. If you were connected to your laptop and you didn't have the hard drive space to copy over all of your footage, I mean, um, it's just a fantastic platform. Now, with SD cards, you wouldn't be able to edit to those. You wouldn't, you know, you, I don't like having an SD card hanging out the side of my computer um, when I can just plug this in, copy some files over, and then be ready to go. So let's take a look at this Atomos Ninja Blade and how um, some of the settings work on it. Uh, and I'll further explain that. Now, all right, so we're gonna take a look at the Atomos Ninja Blade and how I use that um, in the studio here. Now, in a previous video, I showed you the setup that is kind of, um, I'm zoomed in right now on the Ninja Blade, but I had the setup that I was showing you, which was everything else that's here in another video. I'll link that in the description below so that you can check that out um, should you want to know a little bit about that setup. So what we're looking at here is the, the Atomos Ninja Blade, which I think is a fantastic piece of technology. Um, it's plugged into a Sony A7S here with a, a HDMI cable, and then there's a hard drive, a one terabyte solid state drive right in the side of it, which allows me to record um, forever. I mean, I have this thing set wide open to film at its highest resolution, uh, which is 1080, um, 5994 uh, in ProRes 422, and I have 13 and a half hours, I pro about 14 hours worth of recording time that I get out of this. I can um, go and make some changes here to uh, the, the frame rate and everything. Um, I can tap ProRes, and uh, I can unlock codecs um, if I had made purchases through Atomos. Uh, there are different codecs that you can unlock. Um, there's high quality, low quality, and 422. Um, and then, of course, I can come in here and uh, see information about my media, which I'm using a Samsung uh, solid state drive 850 Evo, one terabyte. Um, and I have the ability to format it right there. Um, I'm also plugged in through uh, with AC power. I'm using the AC power adapter, so I don't have to worry about keeping things charged. Now, I have this forward facing towards me. Usually I'm sitting in this direction and I have it forward facing so that I have some sort of a reference screen. I'm not one that wants, I, I'm not constantly looking at myself or anything. I just wanna make sure that I stay in frame. So occasionally I do check it, uh, but mainly I have it pointing to me just so that I can make sure I'm still filming. I don't have any problems that have arisen. Um, you know, during that process. So uh, let's take a look at the menu. In the menu, there are different things that you can do here. Um, you can set your scene and shot uh, so that that way when you import the footage later, um, you have it all kind of organized. It's much easier to organize it. We have display options, um, which we can adjust and, and change just to kind of change what's on the display, whether or not the LEDs illuminate and all that good stuff. Um, you can set the date and time of your device, which I think I probably need to fix the time. I think I forgot to reset the time um, when the time changed about a month and a half ago. Uh, then we have Ninja Blade Info, which is going to show us our version and all that good stuff. Um, and then our time code, which allows us to choose how we want the time code to be triggered. Um, I just have it set to camera trigger, but we can set it to none uh, or HDMI 
uh, and allow the uh, the time code to be triggered by the camera through HDMI. Um, then we can choose source, time of day, record run, auto start, or HDMI, and I just have it set to that. Time code isn't super important to me because I'm typically just using a couple of cameras in studio here, and um, uh, sometimes they're smaller cameras that don't have any information like that. I'm not plugged into a Ninja Blade, so I'm recording straight to the SD card on the camera. So time code just isn't a good option for me unless I was using multiple Ninja Blades or something like that. Um, and then of course you could power it off here as well. Um, you have audio levels here, which you can tap and you can see your audio levels and your audio gain and your line out level. On the side of the device here, there is audio inputs and outputs. Um, this will pull in audio over HDMI, so typically I'm not plugged into these at all unless uh, I have a pair of headphones plugged in. So typically I have audio going into the camera one way or another, either through my Rode Filmmaker kit or through um, an audio output from a mixing board uh, goes right into the camera and then um, through the camera through HDMI audio comes in um, and I usually go that route just to kind of keep things simple. Um, I ha also have an Atomos, uh, uh, another Atomos Ninja, well not a Ninja, the, um, the Samurai and uh, through the Samurai there's another way to um, to have your audio come and through the Atomos Shogun, uh, which is a 4K recording device, there's actually a breakout adapter that you can use and then plug, um, you can plug audio in directly uh, from XLR outputs and stuff. So typically that is the method that I use when I'm using um, the Shogun. Okay, so a uh, couple last features here because uh, hitting record, that's pretty basic. Playback is pretty basic as well. Um, you can go and playback any of the uh, vi any of the videos that you filmed here. You will need to plug in headphones if you want to hear the audio, as there's no built-in speaker in this device um, that I'm aware of, anyways. And uh, then you also have a couple of features over here uh, that help you with your color. You have waveforms. Um, lots of different uh, things here that kind of help you dial in your exposure and your color. These are very useful. Um, typically when I'm filming something uh, like a conference or um, filming something in lighting conditions that are kind of uncontrollable, I tend to use these because it helps me uh, kind of get a better visual. It's very hard to just look at the screen and know what's going on. Um, you need those waveforms to kind of help you uh, kind of get a better picture of what's happening um, because you might not notice what's happening until later on when you're editing this and then you figure you find out that you have some issues. Um, so we also have some focusing options here as well. Uh, I just turned on um, focus peaking and that kind of shows me that um, this camera is kind of in focus uh, and the tripod I have a yellow kind of rim around it and I could actually change the color of that if I would like. Um, we also have uh, zebras for exposure, um, and then uh, and then f I believe this is called false color. Um, and so there's lots of different ways that we can check exposure. One of the neat things if you're filming um, a lot is being able to favorite and reject uh, takes. The, and basically that means favorite and rejecting files. And so when you're favoriting and rejecting, you're able to um, not have to worry about deleting files or worrying about kind of playback and deleting files, which I would not recommend tr deleting files on the device because that's just scary. What if you accidentally format or you accidentally delete uh, a file that you didn't mean to? Um, I would prefer to just favorite or reject files and then handle uh, deleting files that you don't need later on. Um, I never delete files until after the finished video is complete. I don't want to accidentally get rid of a file that I know that I needed. So the Atomos Ninja Blade now is a lot cheaper than it used to be. Uh, when I bought it, it was $1,000 for the kit. Now I believe it's around $600 or $700 um, for the kit. It comes uh, with a device, uh, battery adapters, an AC adapter. 
Um, it comes with a case. I mean, it's just a, a super nice package. Um, the display on the Ninja Blade is pretty good. It's uh, not as good as the Shogun, uh, but for the price of this device, you would spend about as much money on an equivalent display uh, but with the Ninja Blade, you also get the internal recording functionality. And they are always updating the software on this as well, which means you're getting new features uh, when they have them available. They're not, you know, trying to sell you on a new device every couple of months or every year. Um, you're just, you're getting software updates on a fantastic device. So uh, there's links in the description below to the Ninja Blade. Um, as well as a couple of other accessories here. Uh, like I said, if you wanna see my entire setup here that is kinda of off camera, uh, the link for that video is in the description below as well. If you have any questions about filming with the Ninja Blade, um, let me know uh, in the comment section below. I'd love to answer them or at least do my best. Uh, so thanks again for checking out this video and we'll see you next time on Ditch Auto.